Welcome everyone to History Gone Wilder, part of Have History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and as a Civil War historian, I have people come up to me and ask me this question repeatedly. Why did Lee fight at Gettysburg, or why did he order Pickett's Charge? So, I wanted to answer this question in video form. In this video, I do not try to read the mind of Lee. I simply use Lee's words to explain himself. I add context to his report of the campaign to help viewers understand why he fought at Gettysburg and why he ordered Pickett's Charge. So, let's start with why he launched the Gettysburg Campaign. He states, The execution of this purpose embraced the relief of the Shenandoah Valley from the troops that had occupied the lower part of it during the winter and spring, and, if practicable, the transfer of the scene of hostilities north of the Potomac. Lee would use the Shenandoah Valley and the Blue Ridge Mountains during his push into Pennsylvania, which would rid the valley of enemy forces and allow for the residents in that region to farm and grow crops with fewer fears of enemy troops raiding their fields. Lee also states, It was the thought that the corresponding movements on the part of the enemy to which those contemplated by us would probably give rise might offer a fair opportunity to strike a blow at the army then commanded by General Hooker, and that in any event that army would be compelled to leave Virginia and possibly to draw its support troops designed to operate against other parts of the country. Here, Lee is explaining that although he hoped to strike a significant blow at the Union Army, he hoped that the Union Army would concentrate and draw troops from other parts of Virginia and the South to relieve its farmers from foragers. The war had devastating effects on the Virginia landscape, and Lee knew it, and if his army was to survive, and if the Confederacy was to survive, he needed to get both his and the Union Army out of Virginia. Environmental historians of the Civil War have pointed out that the horses in the Army of Northern Virginia were wore down and needed replaced. Some of Lee's artillery needed to be left behind because he simply didn't have the horses to pull them on campaign. The Gettysburg Campaign would be an attempt to raid northern farms of their horses to be put to use in the Confederate war effort. Once in Pennsylvania, Lee explained the first day's engagement as such. The attack was not pressed that afternoon, the enemy's force being unknown and it being considered advisable to await the arrival of the rest of our troops. Orders were sent back to hasten their march, and in the meantime, every effort was made to ascertain the numbers and position of the enemy, and find the most favorable point of attack. It had not been intended to fight a general battle at such a distance from our base, unless attacked by the enemy. But, finding ourselves unexpectedly confronted by the Federal Army, it became a matter of difficulty to withdraw through the mountains with our large trains, at the same time, the country was unfavorable for collecting supplies while in the presence of the enemy's main body, as he was enabled to restrain our foraging parties by occupying the passes of the mountains with regular and local troops. A battle thus became, in a measure, unavoidable. I think this statement by Lee is the most telling about why he fought at Gettysburg the way he did. I will cover Yule's actions on the first day in a later video, so let's look at the overall situation. Lee knew a few things about the Union Army. He had engaged at least two corps, and maybe parts of others, and that when word spread about a battle, more enemy troops would be on their way. When A.P. Hill engaged with the 1st Corps and later the 11th, that set in motion all the events that transpired over the next two days. First, Lee needed to concentrate all of his forces at one location, and he hoped he could do so before the Union Army concentrated. He was numerically inferior, and if he was to attack the entire Union Army, the task would be monumental. Second, with the Union Army so close, that limited his maneuverability. For those who wonder why he did not disengage and pull back somewhere else to fight a defensive battle, he explains it in that excerpt. He was now too close to the Union Army to maneuver. Their cavalry and local troops now restricted his foraging abilities, so he could not live off the land, and his wagon trains would be in jeopardy in a retreat. Lee now had no other choice than to attack. Why? Because he needed to either defeat them in open combat, or bloody them enough so that he could withdraw without the threat of the Army of the Potomac chasing after him as he pulled back to Virginia. Either way, he had to attack. There was no other option. If he stayed idle and waited for an attack by George Meade, Union forces would quickly constrict around his army and prevent his men from forging off the land. He had a limited amount of food to draw from, and thus every second he delayed meant he was closer to defeat. This became more evident by his actions on the third day. 
Lee saw the second day of Gettysburg, with the battles around Devil's Den, the Wheat Field, Little Round Top, the Peach Orchard, and Culp's Hill as promising. He would state, These partial successes determined me to continue the assault the next day. The enemy, in the meantime, had strengthened his lines with earthworks. Our troops succeeded in entering the advanced works of the enemy and getting possession of some of his batteries, but our artillery, having nearly expended its ammunition, the attacking columns became exposed to the heavy fire of the numerous batteries near the summit of the ridge, and after a most determined and gallant struggle, were compelled to relinquish their advantage and fall back to their original positions with severe loss. Owing to the strength of the enemy's position and the reduction of the ammunition, a renewal of the engagement could not be hazarded, and the difficulty of procuring supplies rendered it impossible to continue longer where we were. On July 2nd, Lee had partial successes, as he stated. That gave him the confidence that if his men could carry the steep ground on the Union left, why not carry the lower ground in the center, especially with a fresh division at his disposal? Ambrose Wright's troops and a few other brigades actually made it to Cemetery Ridge, the destination of Pickett's men the next day. Again, I will reiterate, once engaged and in close proximity to the Union Army, Lee had to attack. This is not defending his tactics within the engagement, but an attempt to explain why he did so, instead of disengaging and moving to a defensive position. Once the attack ended, both sides waited on July 4th to see what the other side would do, and Lee began preparations to move back into Virginia. I hope this video helped you understand Lee's reasoning for fighting at Gettysburg. It's important when discussing battles to look at the information available to the commanders at the time or the lack of information. When we consider these factors, we can better understand Lee's actions. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a great day.